I'm telling you, like they they don't do it for nothing in the Hollywoods. They don't have a big burly guy to do it for them with his hands. I'm sure there are some big burly men who work as whatever the job is. Which, I think it's a grip. Which, by the way, if it makes it into the video, you can comment on it below what the that job title is. So, I'm kind of just for that. Oh. <laughs> Everything cool that Ryan does, I cut. That's what happens when you're unilaterally powerful in doing this. I'm unilaterally powerful in everywhere, everywhere in my life. Uh. Except for most places. <laughs> anyway, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. Yeah, we've uh, we've definitely started to work ourselves into a nice little groove here. Going <laughs> with it, so. Oh, man. Uh, anyway, today we want to talk about fulfillment. Yeah, fulfillment. It's, some, it's something that's been on my mind recently a lot with, um, maybe that's how I've been transitioning out of being a student, is is now... Finally being fulfilled? Or just not having a fulfillment, or not being fulfilled by the daily life. The oh, daily, fair enough. The daily grind. So, I don't know. But it's it's something that's been on my mind. I was the one who suggested this this topic because lately I've been thinking a lot more about it. But we can get more into that in the in the podcast itself. This is the podcast itself. Well, I'm talking about after our icebreaker. Fine. Icebreaker. Let's get into an icebreaker. Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? So, 10-year-old through probably 20-year-old me wanted to be a Power Ranger. And I talked about that in a previous, a previous podcast. But I, for the longest time, wanted to be a Power Ranger uh, or a voice actor. Uh, I wanted to do cartoons. So basically the same thing, to be fair. Basically the same thing. Um, now, I want to be, a, I suppose, a Power Ranger of different sorts. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, paramedicine. So I still want to help people in... in in crisis you just, you just don't want to beat up putties what to do it i don't like fighting i mean i work as a security guard at a bar but i don't really like to fight it's not i don't enjoy it i feel like that would probably make you a better security guard it makes me less likely to physically assault somebody fair enough if you are interested in being less likely to be physically assaulted by security you can go to chainsaw and nights yeah. when ryan is working cooler heads prevail when when i'm on Right on. Uh, when I wanted, to, when I was a kid, I wanted to be. I don't actually have any grown-up ambitions that were like serious when I was a kid. Uh, I just sort of wanted to grow up, and uh, that was enough. But I remember when I was about fourteen and going to high school and decided that I needed to have adult ambitions and things like that. Happily, I grew out of that really fast. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be a parapsychologist. You watched a lot of Ghostbusters, huh? Oh my god, like you wouldn't believe. And I was like, and I didn't want to be one of those parapsychologists who goes around debunking everything. I didn't even know about those parapsychologists because we didn't have the internet back then. Uh, no, I wanted to be, I was, a, I was a believer. I wanted to go around and expose the, the underside of reality for people. And Well, I'm really glad I grew out of that too. So you wanted to be Ray. Because I mean, there's, yeah, there's yeah, yeah, yeah. scientists, parapsychologist, and Egon. There's womanizing parapsychologists in um, in, uh, in in Peter. In Peter. So you wanted to be the passionate. Yeah. Online. Yeah. No. Now you mentioned it. I think I did. I think yeah. I did. That's weird. My deep seated bond with Dan Aykroyd extends past Blues Brothers. <laughs> uh, I do love Blues Brothers, though. I don't care how bad those movies are. I love those songs. Um, but uh, and then. I mean, I wanted to be a university professor for a while. Mm. My, my, my slogan during my undergrad was PhD or bust. No. And then I realized I didn't actually want to be a university professor. I just realized I was a terrible academic. That, um, that was part of it, too. Yeah, it was, I, it was... I'm, I'm terribly lazy. Um, don't do my work. I just enjoy the conversation and the reading side <laughs> of it. I, uh, I'm not actually famous for doing the reading either. <laughs> As if you are one of my former profs, comment on this video, but don't comment too much because I am, I'm not actually even capable of, of adequately threatening reprisals at my job for profs. I feel like that would be a terrible abuse of my responsibilities. Goddamn philosophy degree! <sighs> anyway... Uh, now, I mean, grown-up Jim, 30-year-old Jim, almost 31-year-old Jim, we're going to celebrate my birthday. Actually, we will have celebrated my birthday by the time this podcast goes up, and I just dated us, um, which we promised we wouldn't do, no. but I'm not going to cut it. And uh, I want to grow up to be a big kid artist. I don't know that I want to be a famous artist and show in galleries and stuff like that, but I want to take blogging and videos and making stuff and events and 
do that like people do art. Mm -hmm. I think that there's something really valuable in that approach. I think that it would it would fit together and it would be more meaningful. And ultimately, I think it would make me happier and more fulfilled. Seems like a good segue. Yeah. Well, unless you had a little bit more to say. I don't know oh, if I cut you off there. But, uh, segue in away here. All right, so then I pointed yeah. at the obvious yeah. and ruined your segue. Yep. They see us rolling on our segues. That's why we're not friends. Yeah, we're colleagues. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I suppose the the, the 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 question. I mean, I mean, the, the notion of happiness and fulfillment is what is the difference? I mean, what it, what is what does fulfillment mean? I don't think that we're as as with every other term we define. I don't think that we are capable of defining that universally, and it would be mm. highly presumptuous to think that we were. No. But at the very least, I mean, what does it mean to us? Because I think that they are different. I think you, you that you can be unhappy and fulfilled. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, but I'm not sure because I just thought of it. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know if I would go with Aristotle and eudaimonia and human flourishing. I I think people just know when they're happy. Wait, they wait. Know. Ryan disagrees with Aristotle. Ah, oh, well, he wasn't right about everything. Just about virtue ethics. Um, <laughs> no, I. I think a person, um, uh, happiness will, of course, mean different things to different people. But, yeah, I think you can be happy but not necessarily fulfilled. I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not sure if you were to graph it out in terms of, like, four quadrants. You can have happy, not happy, fulfilled, not fulfilled. What exactly yeah. the state of each of them would be. But, I mean, you can, I think you can be happy without a sense of fulfillment. Um, I guess it just depends on where you get intrinsic motivation I, su I suppose then that, that's the difference is, is is it would be really hard to think of a case where you were fulfilled and not happy mm -hmm. but it is certainly no no, no? I, can, I, I think you could think of a time when you'd be fulfilled like um I, I could see academ academia actually be falling under that criteria I mean you are constantly overworked but if you're publishing papers and if you're engaging with the ideas, I think you can get fulfillment, but not necessarily be happy. I, I, I would disagree in part because I think happiness is one of the qualifications. It is a qualification that any reasonable person would set for their fulfillment, I think. I think that, that, that the goal would not be merely to do great things, but to do great things and be happy, which is why... We tell so many stories, or part of why we tell so many stories about people who do great things and who are unhappy. Mm -hmm. You know, the the whole money can't buy happiness. Money can't buy happiness, but it helps. Yeah, it buys opportunity. <laughs> it buys cars and, you know, Playstations and cameras and all kinds of things. But, uh, but I do think that you could be happy without being fulfilled. I think that you could, I mean, you could experience things like momentary happiness or you could rejoice in moments without... Um, being fulfilled because I think we spend a lot of time like that and to to uh, introspect briefly I think I, d I can definitely say that I have spent bunches of time like that where I reflect on moments when I was happy and then think about how I am now less happy and I and I, I wonder if I was truly fulfilled in those moments or if I was just I had just forgotten about all the other things that that weighed on me which maybe Ignorance is bliss, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't actually think that's true, but I mean, it is certainly it is certainly capable. Or even or even simply, um, you could be hopped up on drugs to be happy, mm -hmm. but it isn't clear that that would make you fulfilled. Yeah, if if I were to armchair it right now, and I'm going to take a first crack at it, and I really wish I would have thought about this before we started filming. I could have looked up, say, the, the etymology of fulfillment. But happiness for me is. Um, Pleasure meets, uh, I, I guess I guess it just ultimately comes down to pleasure, and I, I don't want to go too much deeper than that. But fulfillment for me, uh, it strikes me as fulfillment is more like filling something up. Like you, if you're not fulfilled, it's because you're empty in some way. I mean, mm -hmm. you could be lacking happiness, or you could use happiness to fulfill or fill yourself. But I find when I'm when I don't feel fulfilled, I don't feel like. I'm satisfied in that regard that there's still something missing mm -hmm. uh, from me, from my output, from um, my productivity, from something that I have a sense of accomplishment from. So I mean, that's that's uh, the the I think part of the idea we want to talk about is that it fulfillment is defined in the negative. 
Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard to say. It's like trying to find a place to go for dinner. Mm. It's really hard to just say, these are the things I want that will make me fulfilled. Mm. Some people can do that. And I, I, I see some people do that sometimes. Like a, a friend of mine, she is a pharmacist. And she has wanted to be a pharmacist since she was 11 years old. And she loves her work and she's amazing at it. Mm-hmm. And that is like her thing. It's her jam. And she does a ton of other stuff too. She does community work and reenacting and she's super awesome but i mean i mean because she just she she has this idea of 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 what she wants at least in some aspect of 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 her life and she just does it she's like that is the thing that will that will fulfill me Mm -hmm. um but i think a lot of people we define it in the negative we think about the things that do not fulfill us or will not fulfill us and we try and cut those out while trying to swing around in the dark and figure and stumble on the thing that will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's there seems to be a lot of, or at least a lot of the books that I've been uh, encountering recently t- discussing the the problems with follow your passion as career advice or trying to find meaning in your work and whatnot it seems like this is something that people are grappling with because there is, doesn't seem to be a good answer and i don't necessarily know if it's generational that this is a perennial problem but it's repackaged in a new way for for our generation if every generation tackles it uh because usually when you think of your pre like previous generations before they seem to have everything worked out and even though when you talk to them (laughs) you talk to them it's like no i had no idea what i was doing once you get down to the like the nitty-gritty yeah yeah, everything is more complex stupid truth always resisting simplicity but i don't i don't know if we've simplified history that it's just when you're of working age or when you when you've reached adulthood you uh, marry have a family go to work do that stuff like I, i i i just have a hard time seeing career uh, career men or career women anymore sticking it out with one job mm-hmm. um i think that things have things have definitely changed i don't think that like human insecurities have changed or anything like that mm-hmm. although um to recall a conversation i had about a week ago with a friend of mine uh, i have this thing i use it to deal with stage fright but she pointed out that it, it is also maybe good fulfillment advice which is why i bring it up uh stardust was a book and a graphic novel by neil uh, gaiman and uh also a movie which you should watch because it's amazing have you, have you seen have you seen it no it's awesome was it a book or graphic novel sorry I wasn't... yes okay um it is both yeah but uh in it it's a fantasy story a, a star comes down to earth and uh is um you know rescued by a boy and there's witches and they fall in love and the casting is brilliant and Robert De Niro is an airship pirate, and Michelle Pfeiffer is an incredible villain, and like it's just it's it's a great movie. But at one point, the star says stars do, stars don't do anything. They don't fight. They don't do magic. They don't uh, stars do one thing. They do the thing that they do best. They shine. Mm-hmm. And I, I always use this notion when going on stage because in those moments when I am on stage when I am singing. Uh, and I think I mentioned this in our karaoke podcast, but I am focused on on shining, on forgetting all of the things that make my knees shake, and and just remembering that this is the part of me that I that makes me happiest, and that seems in some way more useful than saying simply follow your passion, which which often amounts to be do what you what you like rather than you know this is sort of more do the thing which makes you feel most yourself mm-hmm. um, because often and often we don't have one passion we have lots of different passions some people I, I am certainly fulfilled by lots of different things mm-hmm. as you can tell because i do lots of different things but it is something that i just thought of and it's something that seems seems kind of relevant um, I guess the question is why. I mean, there's the, there's a lot of perception, especially about millennials, which I'm not sure is a generation we fall in. <sighs> I'm on the border. I don't really. Yeah, no, I, I do. I I'm firmly at the beginning of the millennial time ah, band. Young. Um, and I I I 
I think I exhibit some of the characteristics and traits of a millennial. Um, but I don't necessarily identify with all millennials. Well, I, I wouldn't expect you to. In, 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 the, in the same way that I wouldn't expect a woman to identify f- with all women. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it just seems weird. I uh, Because I have a blog, I am, according to most newspaper columnists, a millennial. So I will take that. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, there. There's legitimate resistance to to the the microcosms that come up in the internet, and then there's <laughs> then there's just things that people don't understand. Um, yeah, this isn't live journal. It's not necessarily narcissistic. Um, I won't say that it's not narcissistic. I like seeing myself on camera, but <laughs> but no, I, I think that 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 fulfillment is definitely something that that has. You're you're right. It's it's been sort of a clash between. Um millennials and people we will charitably call old people i have to be very charitable with that (laughs) that's that's mean but uh no and and i don't actually i don't actually think it's a real clash because you find the same thing in the 1960s you find the same thing in the 1970s you find the same thing in the 1980s like it's with with people who are reaching an adult age which is they they do not wish to be nearly employed or um, you know, merely functional or having a family. They they want to do everything sort of bigger and they want it to be the thing that's important to them. You find the same thing in the 1400s. Uh, one of the big Protestant doctrines, and, and it was, it was like Martin Luther had a lot to say about this. And I will say a lot of not nice things about Martin Luther and his arguments and his theses. But one of the core Protestant ideas was that you could be holy in your work that doing your work well it's it's so commonplace now we call it the protestant work ethic Mm. and doing your work well was a sacred thing it was fulfilling a duty Mm -hmm. and it was part of being a good person you can find the same thing in plato where i mean you have all kinds of idle young men who are becoming sophists and that kind of thing but but I mean, it's all about thinking done well. And, of course, when Plato says thinking done well, he means thinking done like Plato. But, I mean, the, the, the point is there that, that people have been generationally looking for fulfillment long before the Internet. Yeah. It's just now we can be much louder about it, and we have a lot more opportunity to do so and to connect with people who can, I don't want to say give us that kind of thing, but certainly help. Yeah. I mean, whether it's with things like Patreon, which basically lets you kickstart an artist, or Kickstarter itself, or, or things like that, like crowdfunding, or just, I mean, using YouTube and, and blogging to improve your reach. Yeah, or just reaching out to different communities. Yeah. Reddit or any of the other kind of... Um, cult. Social... Cult, eh, cult might be strong. I'm just thinking, like, you, you get within <laughs> the subreddits and stuff. And... No, um, I my, my very first internet community that i was ever part of was called cult oh kennedy's uber elite terrorists we ran out of uh rantradio.com which is still running they're a they're a uh, uh, british columbia based industrial and punk internet radio station that is entirely free and that was so a friend of mine turned me on to it and, I, and there was a lot of sort of like super activist left-wing rhetoric like they played a lot of jello biafra and dead kennedys and stuff like that and it got me into it and it was it was exactly what 18 19 year old jim needed and it was it was really it was really useful to me at the time but one of the big things that that we acknowledged and that with the the whole point of it like the name was entirely tongue-in-cheek uh, we were not actually terrorists uh we were uber elite but it was it was about finding yourself on the internet and finding yourself in your digital persona mm-hmm. and finding other people like you. I mean, most of us were were like sort of sixteen to twenty, and there were there were there were some older people too. But it was it was that kind of if you were the only weird person in your tiny little town, and you're you're weird because you're a gamer, or you're weird because you know you you dress in black, or you're goth, or a punk, or whatever. The th- but there's a thing that makes you weird. That thing is the is the thing that lets you connect with other people online and remember that you are not alone. Mm-hmm. And that is, especially as a kid growing up in like the beginning of the internet, is the 
best feeling when you were like 15 or 16 or 17 and you feel alone and you find people who are like you it's like high school at a lunch table yeah no, that's true it's the, the idea of the physical or the geography no longer limiting to uh, being a limiting factor yeah. to you connecting with other people and so i think i think that ties into into fulfillment in the sense of why it's important because we all feel like that i think at some point we all feel like we're the only one. We all feel empty at points. I don't think I don't I don't think all the time. But definitely I, I would I would be suspicious of a person who told me they had never felt that. Um mm. I don't think that I would be suspicious of them because they're they're a villain or something, but I would I would wonder if they had they had the same sort of degree of introspection. Yeah. Um I don't want to say that I enjoy that degree of introspection, but it does exist. Yeah. No, I just find with, um, so I said at the top of the show that yep. I've been thinking about this a lot recently and it really came out um, because I'm not, I don't enjoy doing my job per se, um, my job at the college. It's not that it, it's not a bad job. I get paid very well. I have a great boss, great working environment, lots of freedom i don't have like a lot of um i don't mm -hmm. have people staring over my shoulders or whatever i have a, yep. a large degree of autonomy i just don't find the work very fulfilling mm -hmm. um that used to not be the case when i worked in the gambling lab i was bored on the bingo project because it was a lot more of what i'm doing now but when i went when i got sent out into the field to to collect data at the casinos I found that to be very rewarding. I could work 10 and 12 hour days and not bat an eye. I mean, I'd be tired, of course, but for the most part, I found it very enjoyable. And so I'm doing this job and I'm only working a couple days a week, working at the bar, and then I have a smattering of volunteer gigs, but you know, healthy smattering of volunteer gigs. But I'm just, I, for some reason, in October, November, I, 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 qu I cut out of work one day early you know, a couple hours early. I made up for the time. Like, I'm not unethical yeah. all the time, but <laughs> but I cut out work early. I went home and I was talking with my girlfriend. And I'm just like, I, I don't, I don't enjoy it. I'm not fulfilled by my job. And if I don't find a way to reconcile that, they're just gonna fire me because I'm gonna stop working altogether and just surf the internet. You should all not day. do that. No, I really shouldn't. And I owe it to my boss to be productive. I owe they they pay, they pay me, they compensate me. They're very fair to me. I need to figure out a way. So I, I just I it got me thinking about this. And then in January, I talked to you about podcasting and I've been starting up side projects, little side hustles that allow me to work on things that I find fulfilling. Like I said, podcasting um, with you. I've been looking into maybe starting my own little podcast about philosophy. Um, at some point, if it ever gets made, I don't want to make an internet promise. We were talking about that earlier, but we'll link it somewhere. Um, but because I want to apply my philosophy degree a little mm -hmm. bit, and I enjoy the history of ideas, so I want to explore it. Yeah. Um, I joined an ethics board, so again, I'm working on things that are related to the, those elements of philosophy that I really enjoyed and were really passionate about um and then i also find fulfillment at my job at the bar not just yeah checking ids and spotting fakes and whatnot but um which you are really good at your fake count is ridiculously high yeah well the the real the real total would have to be i need to find out how many of them are false positives and and actually and then compare that to the to the true negatives, the people who still get into the bar underage. Wow, that's impossible. I well, it's not. Yes, yeah, but it's it's definitely it's definitely something that makes me aware that I'm not perfect and I need to I need to be accountable to that. But fair enough. But I find fulfillment in it. And when, for example, when I have to do first date at the bar, I don't like it when people get hurt, but I do find it fulfilling being able to help them and that my coworkers turn to me for guidance for leadership or just to make the problem go away, and I can mm -hmm. do that. Um, and I find that that level of engagement invigorating <laughs> and that's kind of why i said earlier on that right now my direction is paramedicine um because i don't regret doing philosophy as a degree uh i cannot imagine what i would be like if i had not taken a philosophy degree if i had either gone into engineering like i considered in high school or uh or i, I also made a subtle shift from uh thinking about an english degree because i had a, a teacher in high school who really turned me down towards english 
uh, but then I made a sh subtle shift towards philosophy in the end. So I, I don't know where I would be or what I would be doing right now. I doubt I would have... Well, I might have met some of the people that I met now that have t brought me to where I am now, but I... Yeah, I just, I, I can't imagine what life would be like otherwise. So here's my, or, or my sort of closing question for you then. Okay. Um, which is, I mean, you just had a whole list of things that you do mm -hmm. that you, that you, that you, you, you find fulfilling. Mm -hmm. What is it about those things? Like, like, is there a quality that ties those things together? I, um, I, I would say, um, I would say legacy. Um, which might need a, a, a little bit of unpacking. Yeah. So uh, there's a Greek proverb, um, forgive the sexist language, but I'll just express it as it was, um, that it's commonly known as, but uh, society grows great when men plant trees under which shade they'll never sit. So, I mean, you can, let, let actually, you know what, to be fair, I should express it. So society grows great when people plant trees under which shade they'll never sit. Um, I like working on things that exist uh, be, not because of me specifically, but that I help to bring about. I derive a lot of happiness from playing video games, from playing board games. Like for example, uh, next month we'll talk, or sorry, next month, next podcast, which is in two weeks, we'll talk a little bit about our favorite video games. And I immensely enjoy sitting down for five and six hours playing a video game. I, I'm so happy with it. I love solving the puzzles, but in the end, when I shut it off, I don't feel like I've really been all that productive. But when I, when I do feel fulfilled, it's on those things of which exist as a thing or a product that's separate from me and separate from my experience. So these podcasts, for example, I find Im immense fulfillment in the idea of creating something that stands apart and that maybe can be enjoyed by somebody else. But I have no illusions that anybody's ever going to watch these. People watch these. I know people watch them, but it's the same with my podcast. Like I, I don't have any illusions of monetizing it because I think a lot of people are going to watch and subscribe to what I do. I'm just doing it as an exercise to um, explore creatively or uh, work through ideas or just do something that had I not done it, it wouldn't exist. And it's a little bit the same with... Uh, I find fulfillment in first aid that it's not a hero complex. It's just, I was able to help people because I had the right skills at the right time with virtue ethics, <laughs> but I, I had the skills. And I that was virtue able ethics, to... our season finale will be the, ver the two part <laughs> virtue ethics, sh like throw down. Maybe, maybe, but anyways, uh, to, to, to cap off the thought, um, when, when it comes to the first aid, it's, uh, I, I was, I have the skills and I was able to help some, somebody now granted somebody else could have helped them out, but nevertheless, I was able to help them out and they were able to recover from whatever it was that injured them in the first place. So the, I derive fulfillment from either helping people that way or creating things that exist ex that are external to myself. Weirdly, I, I derive, f I, I, I get a lot of fulfillment from helping people do that. I like facilitating people. In, in, in making their own things, which is why I like helping other people make content as much as I like making it on my own. Probably more than I like making it on my own so that I can spend more time playing video games. But mm -hmm. um, and, and sort of caring for people in that way. I get a lot of... I joke about my role at Headshots, um, which by the time this podcast out, it will be over. So hopefully you've checked it out. Uh, and yeah. maybe donate or support it in some way. You might still have time to donate. So yeah. I'll put the link. I'll put the link down below. But I mean, we raise money for children's hospitals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You've seen other stuff about it. On the, there's lots of stuff on the channel about it. Mm. But I, I, I joke about my role as being Headshot's dad because most of over 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 three years, most of what my most of the things I used to do have been passed on to people who are better at them than I am. In terms of, of whether it's dealing with sponsors or interview candidates or you know, a million other things that I just don't do anymore. Either because we have the infrastructure to, to handle it mm -hmm. or because we have people who are better. And so what I do is serve as the sort of central hub for how those things are happening. But it's also my responsibility to take care of everyone who is doing that. So if someone is feeling the strain of their responsibilities... I mean, it's my it's my job to make sure that a those things those responsibilities are still fulfilled, but also that they are they are fulfilled in a way that is healthy for all of us. So I mean that rather than riding somebody's ass about it, 
that involves trying to get them the support that they need so that they can do their job uh, well or, or, or acknowledging that they have too much in some cases they have too much on their plate to be able to do their job well and and and, and finding ways to that they can help in a, in a sort of lower pressure role mm-hmm. but yeah I mean that is the thing that as much as it stresses me out when when someone is able to do their thing better because of a thing that I did I feel really good Oh, that's that is what I that is that is the thing that fulfills me. I didn't actually realize that until I just spit out that sentence. This is all spontaneous. The, we don't uh, actually script this. It's true. No, we just write a couple questions to to talk about, and that's yep. about it. But I think that that we have talked about fulfillment enough. I would love to hear what fulfills you or what things you do that you find fulfilling. I think that I would certainly learn a lot from that, and I think that Ryan would too. Yeah, and there's definitely no wrong answer. I mean, if you are happy and you find fulfillment in unlocking achievements or gaming mm-hmm. online with your buddies, like we're not trying to say that you should be productive or yeah. you should help other that's, people that's a good create. Point. You know, whatever fulfills you is is really ultimately going to fulfill you, and that's what's most important. Yeah. Not what I do think there are some wrong answers. Like, I mean, murder. If murdering people fulfills you, you should maybe like yeah. get some help. Yeah positively fulfill well i don't know the, i don't know fulfilling well, well we're not gonna we're not gonna attempt to unpack this out we're just gonna end the podcast yeah so, so we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks i will see you guys later with music and vlogs as always i'm jim and i'm ryan and signing out stay awesome <laughs>